The Browns have played four games so far this season. And although four games is no longer a perfect quarter slice of the year, thanks to the 17th game that the NFL added in the offseason. But yes, four games has passed. So we are at the first quarter end break of the 2021 season. What's everybody's grades? Who's scoring what? Where are we at? Well, let's talk about that. But before I get into that, I want to make sure I give a shout out to the Patreon.com dog check tier members. I'm going to start with Michael Matik, Camvax, Jalil Salim Jr. and Sr., Caleb Pickering, Benjamin Woods, Michael Terry, Sam28, Wani Boy, Rob Morehouse, Tyler Chiz, Michael Morales, Mark Kahn, Max Haymaker, Nick Merrick, DAJ, Joe Hart, Gabriel Wilson, Fred Pat the Third, David Valtiar, Relentless Buck, Rex Kaufman, Kevin Johnson, Cleveland Cart, Matt Eight, Sign Sheets, Gemini, Leon Freeman, Fight 3074, Chunt, Yo-Yo, Matt Lloyd, Paul Wilcox, Hondo Magnifico, Kyle Stouffer, Lukey from Munich, Dave Roth, J Guy 101, Musty Taco, Brad Cowbo, Dylan W, James McGinley, Arendal, Chad Gimme, David Malinato, Josh Bendor, Austin Rich, Mark M, Stuart Moore, Dylan Hill, Cleveland BCI, Robert Germain, Dave Mike May, Andrew Hirsch, Curtis Bayer, Batman, Barack Kumar, John Albert, Beerman 069, Masayua, Buds Roland, Mac House, Reeve Hertz, Philip Wilcox, and Marie Vivert, Sean Barron, Goggles Pisano, Dom Gazzullo, Nick Nasty, Ian Whitaker. Colin 2 and 6, Christian, Dave Strong, Michael Stone, Soul Train, Billy, Moose Gentry, Austin Z, Mark Burnett II, Andre Griffin, Otis Wolf, Dog Pound Kai, Greg Ehlers, Austin Bolin, Lydia Mahawk, Alexander Davis, Chris Falms, Picktown Browns backer, Max Nilakenko, Max Al Dojo, and Water Bear Marketing. Again, guys, thank you so much for your support. It means a ton to me. Now let's jump into the video. So these grades are going to be interesting, right? Because the team is three and one and three and one. I don't care who you played is a passing um, record. And honestly, it it feel, doesn't feel like this, but the Browns are on a three game win streak currently as we speak. Um, and we're very close to being four and oh. But this does not feel like a team that has been firing on all cylinders, that has been playing their best football. This feels like a team that has been stumbling around a bit, but they're good enough with just their raw talent that they can win games early on against teams that, quite frankly, they're just better than. Um, but that, And I think that's going to reflect a lot in these grades. I think it's going to be kind of surprising to some to see that these grades aren't going to be as high as what you would assume given the Browns' record. And we're going to start with the offense. And I'm going to give the offense a C-. minus. The one aspect of this offense that has at least been close to normal is the rushing game. You, know, you got nine rushing touchdowns, 708 yards. The run game has been good. By any metric, it's good. Not really hitting those same highs they hit in 2020. Like some of the cumulative numbers look the same, but if you look at how they're getting them in game, the lack of, of big explosive plays on a regular basis from these running backs, especially Nick Chubb, um, it, it's kind of disappointing. And especially when you look at the red zone execution in the run game and also the passing game, it's just been under what the standard was for this team coming into the season but nonetheless still a very good output i think there's two people on this offense i felt like have consistently in every game they've played in played extremely well kareem hunt and rashard higgins they deserve a round of applause and a pat on the back they have been the two things that have been consistent on this offense that have been great Odell and David Njoku have been good so far David Njoku having that one big game Odell having a big game on his uh, game back so that's all good in there um, everybody else though on this offense has been underperforming Joe Batonio has had a bad game Jedrick Wills not healthy right now. Um, Jack Conklin has had a very up and down start to this year. Wyatt Teller is not as dominant as he was last year. J.C. Treader has been fine, but the offensive line play as a collective has gotten worse uh, than it was last year for whatever reason. More sacks to Baker Mayfield, more uh, runs for losses this year, less first downs, less fourth down conversions, less goal line conversions. So 
all of that goes on the offensive line, um, and it's underperforming, and everybody else on this team is pretty much underperforming. Baker Mayfield especially included in that, underperforming. He had one very good game versus the Chiefs, threw an interception at that last drive, so not even couldn't cap that off with like a great performance because if he does make that drive win that game, that's an excellent performance, but he doesn't do that there. And then, you know, not bad games by any metric for the next two weeks, right? I know now people are acting like the Bears game was awful, but it wasn't awful. It wasn't a bad game. It was a good game for him. It was just he wasn't hitting the same highs that he hit in 2020, right? He wasn't hitting the same throws. He wasn't being as accurate. It was more inconsistent there. Um, It's kind of reminiscent of what we saw from him at the beginning of 2020 last year, where he was more inconsistent, missing high more often. Um, So it just might be something about him getting getting warmed up to the season or whatever it is. It takes him a while sometimes. Um, But yeah, that's been happening with Baker. The offensive line hasn't been there. This is a C minus grade for this offense. And it's graded a little bit on a curve here just because we know that this offense is more than capable of being top five, if not top two, if not the best offense in football. And right now they've been forming around the middle of the pack which is very disappointing for an offense of this caliber. If this were a lesser, if Pittsburgh were putting up the numbers that the Browns offense were, I think this grade would be higher for Pittsburgh. But if you're talking about the Cleveland Browns offense, one of the best offenses in the NFL, and they're putting out just a middle of the line output, um, you know, this is a C minus for it's almost a D. Uh, If they weren't three and one, it would be a D. Now we're going to talk about the defense and the defense. Woo, B plus. They are so close to an A. Their last two games were A pluses, um, but the first game, eh, you know, it was up and down. It's the Chiefs. Um, So, you know, you're not going to stop them, but you could have hoped for a turnover or or a big play um, in that game while you're going to give up points. You want to make some kind of of momentous play as a defense in that game. And then the Texans game was just awful for the defense. And it's amazing. This defense went from everybody, and I mean everybody, saying that the Browns should fire Joe Woods and that Joe Woods is terrible and that Joe Woods is ruining the Browns and the Browns aren't going to win anything. Because of Joe Woods um, for like two straight weeks to this defense possibly being one of the better ones in the division, if not one of the better ones in the NFL. I mean, if they perform like they have the last couple of weeks, it's not out the question. They have been really good. Why have they been really good to the point to where they can carry a underperforming offense? JOK, he's excellent. Every time he gets on the field, he makes plays. Grant Delpit and Greg Newsom have been breaths of fresh air to this secondary. And then even Greedy Williams stepped in last week and played well here. And then Jadavion Clowney and Miles Garrett. Now, I am somebody who for the last two to three years has been hyping up the potential of this combination if you have watched me for any length of time you know that I was always a big fan of bringing Jadavion Clowney and Miles Garrett together I thought that would be a dream tandem that you can have and they're exceeding my expectations so far I didn't think Jadavion would have as many sacks as he has right now I didn't think Miles would have as many sacks as he has right now in the Dominance that Miles Garrett is showing on the football field right now is ridiculous. With that middle of the defense of Malik McDowell and Malik Jackson, specifically Malik McDowell playing excellent football, um, excellent complimentary football. Tech McKinley's coming in um, off the bench and providing some good pass rushing. Man, this defensive line, they did not have a great first two games of this season, but these last two games have been Everything that you could have dreamed of when you put them together. They're moving those guys around. They're putting them next to each other. They're they're switching them around. It's just fun to watch. Miles Garrett, he looks like he's on a different level than he's ever been in his career, the way he's playing right now. And Genevion Clowney looks back to 2016 form because he's actually finishing some of these sacks. And when he gets pressures, these aren't 
wasted pressures where quarterbacks are still able to complete passes. These are pressures where the quarterback's throwing the ball into the dirt. Like, these are legitimate pressures that J, I mean, not the J, okay, that Jadavion Clowney is getting on a regular basis with this defensive line. So, as somebody who had championed this combination for like two off seasons, it's shocking to me that they're playing better than I thought they would coming into us being somebody who had loved this combination on paper. So all shots out to them. Defense has been the best thing about watching the Cleveland Browns so far in 2021. And I think that's good for the future, right? Right now, yeah, it's frustrating that the offense isn't clicking. It's frustrating that Baker's not playing well. That that leads the Browns open and vulnerable to a bunch of jokes or a bunch of, like, weird takes that you're going to hear. Yeah, that does suck. But long term, man, we were worried about the defense. We know the offense is going to be good. We were worried about the defense. And we all felt like, hey, if this defense could be top 15 we're gonna be all right and right now they look a little bit better than top 15 we'll see huge test this week versus the chargers um but right now it's looking pretty good for that defense to end up being one of the better units or in the better half of units in the nfl now let's talk about everybody's favorite phase of the game special teams i think there is a lot of good here and there's One bad thing with the special teams. I think the coverages on both kickoff and punt returns have been great. Uh, I mean, when JOK was on kick return coverage, this was like the best kick return coverage unit in football. He's no longer on kick return coverage for obvious reasons. Still very good, right? You got guys like uh, AJ Green, MJ Stewart, who really step up in that aspect. But yeah, the coverages have been good. The kicker, Chase McLaughlin, he's been excellent. Quite honestly, right? He's made, what, two 50-plus yard field goals. One of those field goals, especially the one he made last week, very important that he makes that. Um, made another long-range 40-yard-plus field goal. He's doing the extra stuff, right? You guys hear me talk about a kicker. All I honestly want a kicker to do is make under 40 yard field goals and make extra points. I really don't care what they can do outside of that. I'm not willing to um, break the bank or, or get risky in the pursuit of that. But Chase McLaughlin has had that to his game. He's made his extra points, and he's made the easy field goals so far. Knock on wood. Let's hope that continues. But if that is a trend that does continue for him, that's really good news for this football team. But that's the special teams, and that's the good stuff about the special teams. And that's why special teams gets an A. The reason they don't get an A-plus is, unfortunately, one of the fan favorites, Jamie Gillian. He hasn't been good. Um, His punts, a little shaky, fumbled punt in Kansas City. One of the mistakes that cost the Browns that game among many in that game. Um, Yeah, he hasn't been great. But I'm not going to let a punter weigh down the excellent work that everybody else. Demetric uh, Felton is somebody who needs to be mentioned as a good punt returner um you know even uh schwartz anthony schwartz got in there on kick returns and he's looked promising in that area so special teams all around looks great now let's talk about the coaching and i'm going to give the coaching a grade of c plus why am i giving the coaching a grade of c plus one offense being off is extremely weird it seems like they're not opening up the offense or they're restricting things in the offense and I wouldn't put it past Kevin Stefanski to do this because Kevin Stefanski is a real gambler in that aspect because if you remember, he admitted that he held back a significant portion of the offense when he played Pittsburgh in a win-to-get-in game to play Pittsburgh again next week. So Kevin Stefanski coaches, game plans, and puts stuff out there with the utmost confidence in his offensive units, and I think He's not opening up the playbook right now. Like something tells me that this ain't the whole thing right now. This is a quarter or like three pages of it right now. That's just my intuition. Either way, the offense being off is weird. Um, Defensively, look, Joe Woods, he's had an excellent two weeks, but also, you know, the early base defense issues and the predictability of the defense. And, you know, there is predictability when it comes to this offense as well. But 
the predictability of his defense and how much it was killing them early on in third down. That was a problem. It got fixed, uh, but it was still a problem. Offense has been a problem that hasn't been fixed. Predictable offense, predictable defense at times, but 3-1 and one record, so you can't be below a C. Um, so that's why they're going to be a C-plus for me. And now we're going to go to the front office, which gets a grade of A. This is the easiest A I have ever had to give, ever. Um <laughs> Look at the young players and the flyer guys and all of the free agent guys that are stepping up right now, right? I talked about JLK, rookie, Greg Newsom, rookie, Grant Delpit, ro- well, not a rookie, but essentially a rookie. And that's also a draft pick of Andrew Barry. Um, you know, Malik McDowell was a flyer in camp. Now he's starting for this team and he's one of the better starters on this team. Anthony Walker is somebody who has played well. Malcolm Smith, the most underrated re-signing and the most underrated signing on this team is Malcolm Smith. For two years so far, he has been a very good linebacker and he was a dude that was signed at the end of camp. That's on Andrew Barry. You look at a lot of these things and a lot of the players on this team and the fingerprints of Andrew Barry are all over it, especially the the well-performing parts. This defense needed to be overhauled. Andrew Barry focused on that and you can literally see all of the new players that he brought in contributing right now this is an a a plus almost um andrew barry has done a excellent job overhauling this roster and it's one of the best rosters in football right now this team just needs to do a better job of putting both sides of the ball together to have more elite looking performances out there because then you know you can start to build a little bit of an intimidation factor which does help you win games right like when teams go in to play in Kansas City and they're all scared or you go into New England when they had Tom Brady you know, you're kind of scared of that that does help you so it would be helpful if this team got it together uh, maybe at the midpoint season put a big run together so this team can have an intimidation factor about them um, going into you know the postseason hopefully that's what you want to see this team build into. But for right now, if I had to get the whole team a grade, right, just collectively, I would say that this team has earned a B minus, a high B minus, almost just a regular B, but a B minus. Um, you would have liked to see a lot of things be better. Um, but ultimately, this team as it is right now is still good enough to be three and one. So you can't be too harsh on them, right? If they were like two and two, they would be like a C. But since they won the games, they got the difference and gave them that B grade there. But that's my thoughts and my grades for this team. Let me know your grades down in the comment section below. But again, guys, thank you for watching. Have a great day. Have a good night.